Scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, throw that beautiful champagne footage. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, where the bubbles are crisp, the secrets are smoother than silk, and the gossip flows like the finest champagne. Big up yourself, Impress. Glasses up to the streets that never sleep and to the secrets running deep. Let's get it. Champagne Secrets. Welcome, beauties and bows, to the chalet. We're doing things a little bit different today. We're taking it from the inside to the outside. We're taking it out by the beach so that we can kick back and cozy up and have a fireside chat. A lot of people really don't pull up for the wellness waves Wednesdays, and I get it. It's because it's not messy enough. But for those trying to get that mental health and that emotional IQ intact, we're going to cozy up and talk about a few things. So grab you some champagne, kick your shoes off, and let your toes dance in the sand, and let's get ready to get into it. Now take those glasses and raise them high. Cheers to you, Confidant, for having the audacity to attack your challenges head on, for becoming the architect of your own destiny. For my loves, you are worth it. Yes. So now let's give a recap of what we've covered um, in the other two weeks. So on week one, we explored the depths of the Loneliness Lounge. Y'all know some of y'all are just so trapped in loneliness, scared to be all one, one with yourself. So you attach to everything else in an attempt not to be by yourself. So we talked about escaping the loneliness lounge. And on last week, we bravely entered the hate chambers and the anger in because some of us are so bitter. We're so bitter and we're so angry, but that's because we hadn't learned how to embrace forgiveness and compassion. So we dealt with hate and anger on last week. And now this week, for week three, we face a formidable challenge. The double sweep of self-loathing and insecurity. So... These two unwelcome guests often sneak into our minds whispering lies about our worth and our potential, right? But today, we're refusing to be held captive by their deceitful voices any longer. Today, we're going to reclaim our power and declare that we are worthy. We are enough, just as we are. So confidants, we're about to dive deep into our hearts and unravel the knots of self-doubt and fear so that we can shine a light on the beauty and strength that resides within each one of us, waiting to be acknowledged and embraced by ourselves. If this is your first time here, welcome. We're going to take a moment to describe this hotel and you have to use your imagination to really make it live for you, right? That's why I have the music in the background and the sound of the waves so we can really make this thing live so that we can escape from it. So 
The Heartbreak Hotel is an architectural masterpiece. It stands as the embodiment of our deepest desires and dreams. From the outside looking in, it is a breathtaking spectacle, a symbol of opulence, elegance, and the promise of endless joy. Its facade glistens under the sun, adorned with intricate details and shimmering glass windows that reflect the sky and the surrounding beauty. Grand sweeping archways lead you to a grand entrance where magnificent chandeliers hang like radiant jewels, casting a warm, inviting glow. The exterior gardens are meticulously manicured with vibrant, fragrant flowers in full bloom, winding pathways and fountains that dance to the melodies of the wind. Guests approach the Heartbreak Hotel with hope and excitement, captivated by its resplendent exterior, which stands as an embodiment of everything we thought we'd ever wanted. Upon entering, the guests are greeted by a vast marble lobby adorned with classical artwork and elegant furnishings. The scent of fresh flowers, lavender, and vanilla linger in the air and soft, soothing music plays in the background. Friendly, impeccably dressed staff offer warm smiles, promising to make your stay unforgettable. The rooms are luxurious, furnished with the finest materials and designer decor. Each room a work of art carefully designed to cater to your every desire. Plush oversized beds with high thread count linens invite you to sink into their embrace. Floor to ceiling windows offer panoramic views of a paradise that seems too good to be true. But as you settle into your room and the door slowly closes and locks behind you, you start to see the truth. The Heartbreak Hotel with its stunning exterior and lavish decor is merely a facade. The beauty and luxury it promises are empty and cold like a mirage in the desert. The rooms reveal a different reality where the opulence disguises a profound sense of despair and the reality of where you are sets in. The Heartbreak Hotel isn't just a catchy name, it's a trap, one that you've placed yourself in and one that you'll have to get yourself out of. <laughs> so, now that you have that picture in mind, let's take a look at these two adjoining suites. First, Prepare to embark on a journey beyond the imagination because many of us are trapped in these rooms. So as you navigate the corridors of the Heartbreak Hotel, you stumble upon a peculiar arrangement. The self-loathing chambers seamlessly intertwined with the insecurity suites. These adjoining spaces are a complex emotional nexus, each room influencing and intensifying the other. The self-loathing chambers are a labyrinthine expanse, cloaked in shadows that whisper cruel reminders of our perceived flaws. So picture stepping into a hall adorned with mirrors that distort your self-image, reflecting back every insecurity with stark precision. If you don't like your hair, every strand is amplified. These mirrors take your most hated flaws and amplify them with precision and detail. The air here is thick with negativity and a suffocating weight that presses down on your shoulders with every breath. This room amplifies how you feel about you, how you think about you, and how you see yourself. And that negativity echoes from the mirrors to the walls, even your speech is amplified. Every time you try to speak, it echoes back. You sound dumb. It accentuates how you feel about your body. See, it's this room that causes girls like Roly to get chopped and screwed in an effort to feel something other than the self-loathing on the inside. 
The loathing is so prevalent that it even causes pain, which turns into loneliness, which turns into anger, which turns into hate. But it all begins right here with how you feel about yourself. And self-loathing leads to self-sabotage. You sabotage your friendships, your relationships, your connections. You push everyone and everything away because you don't like you. So if you don't like you, you feel threatened by anything that looks like it likes you. You're afraid to love because how can anyone love me if I look like this? How can anyone trust me if I don't trust myself? Self-loathing is a strong sense of dislike of oneself. This isn't about anyone else. But as long as you are trapped here, that feeling spreads like a wildfire to everyone else. Mm-hmm. And adjacent to the self-loathing chambers lie the insecurity suites. This is a suite because insecurity has so many different rooms, so many different layers. It's a realm where fears and uncertainties cast looming shadows upon the walls. Imagine stepping into a hall of mirrors that magnify our deepest anxieties and our deepest fears like a horror movie and every mirror is another fear jumping out at you. Have you ever watched a horror movie? And when they got to the hall, the hall seemed to stretch longer and longer and get darker and darker, yeah. It's like that. It's like you're in the hall of your scariest horror movie and at any moment your fear is going to manifest right before you and consume you. Here, the atmosphere hums with the echoes of self-doubt, challenging the very foundation of our confidence. Mean individuals aren't confident, they're insecure. Security is calm, it's not rowdy. It has nothing to prove. Listen. A lion has never lost sleep over the opinion of a sheep. Never. A lion also never has to announce to the world who or what he is. When he shows up, everybody knows. And he doesn't care if the other animals know what he is because he knows what he is. You get it? A lion doesn't need validation. An eagle doesn't need validation. They are their own validation. You've never seen a lion walk into a group of animals with a posture of, you have to accept me, I am a lion. Call me what I am. No, his presence speaks for itself. When a shark shows up, everything scatters without saying a word. Why? Because it's not in words, it's in presence. And when you learn presence, your presence will speak for you. This is the problem that I have with the trans community. You have to accept me. No, my love, I don't. You have to accept you. And when you finally accept you, you won't worry about who does or who doesn't. Do you think that when Dennis Rodman used to step on the court, do you think he cared about what others thought about his hair color or what he wore? Do you think he cared about what others thought about him? No because he was who he was. But I guarantee you, when he stepped on that court, everybody felt him and knew who he was because his presence and his game spoke for itself. We are all like a bunch of children running around saying, accept me, accept me. How about accept yourself and to hell with who doesn't like it? Huh, can we talk? I can respect you and not agree with you, but the minute you try to force me to agree with you, I lose respect for you. But that's for another show. Just remember this, validation is for cars, not for people. The only people who have to validate you is you. Cat Williams said it best, it's called self-esteem. It's esteem of your mother freaking self. So why are we constantly looking on the outside for something that can only be developed and attained on the inside? The journey to these chambers within the Heartbreak Hotel is often a maze of winding paths veiled in human emotion. That's why insecurity itself is a suite. 
Imagine a traveler navigating life's labyrinthine passages, encountering a crossroads marked by moments of vulnerability, heartbreak, and piercing blows to one's confidence. It could be the aftermath of a failed endeavor, a hurtful comment, or a series of events that chip away at the fortress of self-assurance. A painful breakup, a failed marriage that you invested everything into, a backstabbing relative or backstabbing friend, a, fa a failed career move, disrespectful kids or kids who you've given the world to and they turn around and give you they ass to kiss. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some of these children these days, you really want to send a first class ticket to the resurrection, I promise you. And you feel like you did something wrong. No. For some of these children, and I'm talking about the teens and the barely grown ones who think that they have the mysteries of the universe figured out. Yeah, those are the ones. They're led by what they see in society. The sexy reds, the sukis, the krishans, the Instagram fanatics. They don't care about wisdom because wisdom isn't mass broadcast. This is the I gotta see for myself generation. I told my children one day, see, when we were children, our parents were the ultimate say, right? If our parents told us, don't go down that street, because if you go about three blocks up and go to the left, there's a hole right there and you're going to fall in it and die. We were so scared. <laughs> we wasn't even going to go up that block. We was going about three blocks over. Then we're going to go up. We're going to do everything that we can to avoid that area because we weren't going to take a chance of going up that way and ending up un unalived. We was missing that area at all costs. But these kids will go up that street three blocks and turn to the left just to see if they're really going to fall in and die. This generation believes I got to experience life. I got to make my mistakes. I just got to do me. There's a whole graveyard full of untapped potential because someone thought experience was the best teacher and didn't live to tell the story. The best teacher is learning from the experiences of others. I don't need to jump off of a cruise ship in shark infested waters to see if I'll survive. I've seen enough people not make it out to know that's not a chance I want to take. That's what I gotta make my own mistakes is. It's jumping into shark infested waters to see if you have what it takes to make it out. Stop blaming yourself, mom, dad. Just pray for them. Pray that God covers your children and doesn't allow the lesson that they have to learn to be at the cost of their lives. That's all you can do. Put it in the hands of God. See, the path leading to self-loathing chambers and insecurity suites, it begins subtly almost imperceptibly. You don't even know that it's there at first. It's a trail paved with experiences that shape the very foundation of our confidence. It's a series of small cracks that slowly widen, allowing emotions to seep into the depth of our being. Perhaps it begins with a moment of disappointment, a setback that festers in the mind, planting seeds of doubt, or it could be a string of comparisons where we measure our worth against others. The gaps become chasms of insecurity. Stop comparing yourself to others. Stop it. The only thing you could ever be of someone else is a cheap knockoff, an imitation of an original. So we allow self-doubt to spread like black mold because we spend so much time trying to be like others and we can't. You see it on YouTube all the time. Creators who think that if I come on here and I be like so-and-so, I can blow up. No, there's only one Tasha K. Like it or not, you couldn't imitate her if you tried. There's only one Voodoo Doll. There's only one Big Mouth Media. There's only one Evner Entertainment. You can't be them. Even if you steal their words, you'll only be a backstreet knockoff of an original masterpiece. It's facts. Sometimes it's the echoes of past wounds resurfacing, reopening old scars and reigniting doubts that we thought we'd healed from. Do you know why? 
because we never pause to heal. We jump from one scenario to the next, from one broken ship to the next. We haven't regathered the pieces of our hearts that, we, that were left shattered. So we're jumping from one relationship to the next relationship to the next relationship. And we're leaving parts of our hearts there till there's nothing left of our heart for ourselves. Because he has a piece of our heart and she has a piece of our heart. And John has a piece of our heart. And Sarah has a piece of our heart and Malachi got a, a corner over there. Everyone has a piece of our heart and we wonder why there's nothing left for self-love. Picture a traveler walking through the corridors of life, encountering twists and turns that lead to twists and turns. Those turns unwittingly towards these chambers. Every experience, every setback, Every emotional blow becomes a brick in the pathway leading to these interconnected spaces. A journey of self-discovery where the vulnerabilities of being human and having a human experience pave the way to these profound emotional depths. The journey to these chambers isn't a deliberate choice, but an intricate interplay of life's complexities. A convergence of moments that lead down a path where shadows lurk waiting to engulf us in the cavernous expanse of self-doubt and insecurity and fear. The fear of rejection, the fear of acceptance, the fear of love, the fear of living, the fear of dying, afraid to step out, afraid of not becoming, just afraid. And in order to escape, you'll have to realize that this space, this space right here, is about you. It's about you. It's about coming face to face with yourself. Not your fear, but yourself. We spend so much time pointing the finger, but in order to escape these spaces, you have to pay attention to the three fingers that are pointing back at yourself. Self-assurance, self-confidence, self-awareness, self-love, it all begins with self and understanding the power that you have, the power that lies within you. So now, while you're in this space, I need you to envision discovering the tools to rebuild your self-belief. What tools do you think you will need to rebuild your confidence? I need you to picture yourself crafting a sanctuary, resonating with affirmations and self-assuredness, where your uniqueness becomes a bastion of strength. It's as if these suites are intertwined by a shared energy. A relentless cycle where self-loathing feeds insecurity and insecurity amplifies self-doubt. And in order to escape, you need to craft a sanctuary. A sanctuary for you and only you where fear no longer resides. How did Nancy finally defeat Freddy Krueger? She had to face him. Not only face him, but let him know that she was no longer afraid of him. So how are you going to overcome these sweets? You have to face your fears and let them know you no longer have power over me. Within these chambers, imagine discovering the dormant embers of self-compassion amidst the darkness. Picture transforming these cavernous spaces into a cathedral of self-acceptance where every imperfection becomes a mosaic of resilience and every negative thought is replaced with affirmations of self-worth. You have the tools already on the inside. You just have to tap into them. You have to embrace acceptance of yourself and continue to accept yourself until you develop a love for yourself. I need you to love everything from the crown of your head to the tips of your toes, from the texture of your hair to the size of your legs, from the fullness of your thighs to the fullness of your nose to the fat around your knees, from the length of your neck to the spread of your hips, from the way you talk to the way your eyes blink when you smile. I need you to love everything about you, everything about you. Do you remember the old prayer? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the 
courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Right. Exercise time. All of y'all are my clients today for absolutely free. <laughs> I need you to take a piece of paper and I need you to write down everything about yourself that you want to change. Everything that you're insecure about. Everything that you loathe about yourself. Everything. Don't leave anything out. Underneath there, I need you to separate those things on that list into two categories. What you can change and what you can't. And what you will realize is most of the stuff on that list, you have the power to change yourself once you stop being afraid to. Listen, if it's loving yourself, I need you to get up every morning and look yourself in the mirror and just look at yourself. The eyes are the gateway to the soul. Look at yourself without thinking anything. No thoughts. Look at your hair, your eyes, your nose, your lips. Look at your body. Just look for five minutes every morning, every night before you go to sleep. Don't think because the problem lies in our thoughts. For five minutes, I just need you to become familiar with you. Because a lot of us don't know ourselves, and that's the problem. Then after those five minutes are up, I need you to look at yourself and just smile. I need you to smile, and I need you to affirm yourself for five minutes. Affirm your eyes. Affirm your hair. Affirm your lips. Affirm your ears. Affirm the color of your hair. The color of your skin. Affirm your body even the things you don't even like. Every morning, you're going to play the self-love game. You're gonna play it until you feel it. And once you can do it for five minutes, you're gonna increase it to 10. And once you can do 10, increase it to 15. You're gonna do it until it becomes a habit for you. And it's almost natural that every time you look in the mirror, you're telling yourself something wonderful about you. Make it into a poem if you have to. I look in the mirror and what do I see? A reflection of beauty, that's you, it's me. From head to toe, inside out, I love myself, I shout it out loud. Eyes shining bright, smile so sweet, hair on point, I'm so unique. I'm beautiful, I'm handsome, everything I embrace. In every look, every glance, I find treasure. I'm beautiful, I'm handsome, I'm my ultimate pleasure. Look in that mirror, what do you see? A vision of beauty, that's you, just be. From the crown of your head to the tips of your toes, every part, every piece in you it shows. So look at yourself with eyes anew. See the beauty in every view. You're imperfectly perfect. Your flaws make you whole. Learn to embrace them, love them. That's your ultimate goal. I am a masterpiece and God makes no mistakes. I shun the fear and put love in its place. <laughs> I need you to do this for seven days straight. And every time you look in a mirror, I need you to smile and compliment yourself and see if it doesn't make a difference. The courage to change the things I can is the courage to step out without fear and say, I am the architect of my destiny and I refuse to live in fear any longer. If I don't like my body, I'm going to work to change it. I'm going to get up and start working out. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to find me a partner. I'm going to do some squats, some crunches. I'm going to make a choice to change the things that I can because you have the power, He-Man, She-Ra. The power lies within you. It lies within you. Now that's all the time we have for this week. Join us next week where we dive deep into the depression suite and anxiety boudoir. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you're going to start doing those exercises because I need you to escape these insecurities and all of this self-loathing that we've learned to develop for ourselves. Learn to love you, confidant, because you are.
worth it. Confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink till we meet again. Ta-ta.